Good morning and uh, welcome to this webinar. We will start in just a few minutes. We are waiting for other participants to to join us. And today you will see uh, an interesting uh, webinar about Ruidro. So, good morning. I'm uh, Alex Croitoru. I'm from Festo, Romania. And uh, today we have uh, a premiere, let's, let's say. We have uh, the colleagues from, from Germany, the product managers for, uh, for Fluido, uh, Fluido joining us today. So, they will make the, the heavy part of, uh, of this presentation. I will start with some uh, bit of uh, general uh, news about uh, the fluid draw, something about the key features, what is new in the P6 version of the fluid draw, how you can download the licensing models. And then my colleagues will uh, present you the fluid draw in a uh, entire version, how to use it and what can you do. We have today with us uh, Martin Newman, which is the product ma manager of, uh, of Fluid Draw, and he will uh, uh, share of, uh, a lot of his uh, knowledge. Also, uh, Marcus Clement, who is uh, another uh, product manager of, uh, of Fluid Draw with a lot of knowledge in, uh, in this field. So let's start. What is Fluid Draw and what can we do with, uh, with it? We can create pneumatic and electrical circuit diagrams with it on, uh, on a desktop uh, PC. You can see in the picture it's a it's a Mac, but you can also use it on uh, on Windows or other uh, operating systems. You can use the symbols from the library. As you will see further on, you have here the library, which is uh, standardized uh, accordingly to ISO. And you have the pneumatic and also the, the electrical uh, symbol. So you can use the offline Festo product catalogs. You can uh, have uh, extensive drawing functions. You can draw lines, uh, rectangles, uh, circles, and so on. Uh, if, uh, you have a lot of uh, possibilities uh, to set the, the language to, to use. You can create the bill of materials of, uh, of the project. You can create your own database. You have the sizing function and the automatic equipment identification. All of this, it, it will be explained by, uh, by Marcus and by Martin in the live presentation with uh, Fluidro open. So we have a new version, the P6 version of, uh, of Fluidro. 
now which includes the electrical symbols for uh, motors and uh, controllers from, from Festo. We have a new frame editor integrated, some project uh, templates. Now you can uh, import and ex export uh, program settings and many more of this uh, you will see uh, presented by my colleagues. Now, how can we download and, and install? We have here the Festo website. Okay, this is the Festo website in, in Romania. If we wrote here on uh, the search bar from this, if we wrote here fluid draw, and click search. The first result is fluid draw. We click on it and we go on the biggest uh, page with uh, more explanation of, uh, of fluid draw. But we have on the right side ordered fluid draw license. When you click this link, it will open the Festo App World, a new site for uh, software applications. This is the, the first page. And you go here on apps. in engineering tools and the first result is Fluidro. You can click on see the all details and now you have a short description, the process of license and what it means to everything, how to subscribe and what uh, it's a perpetual license. The news that I already spoke about, the classic functions and what you can do with, uh, with it, and some manuals how to set up and how to, to use. What can you do in this moment? You can use the trial license for uh, 30 days. It's free, you can use it to, to play with it to see if it's uh, good for uh, your purpose. And if you have an online shop uh, account with uh, pricing, you can also see the prices for uh, these two licenses. But we go back to the, to the presentation and i will let my colleague martin to to talk about the the licenses so martin yes warm well, welcome also over. thank you very much for this introduction warm well, welcome also from my side we have two different license options we can offer here to you and i would like to quickly describe them to you before um, showing you the application itself um, as mentioned before, you can start with a 30-day free trial license, which includes all the functionality of FluidDraw, and you can um, see whether whether it suits your purposes. And when regarding to buy FluidDraw and use it um, professionally in your company, you have two options. One option which I would highlight and recommend to you is FluidDraw 365. This is our annual subscription license which means that you buy this license and you pay always for the next 12 months in, 12 month in advance and it will be automatically renewed um, at the end of this 12 month period if you don't cancel the subscription. And the benefit of this license is that you will always have the newest Fluid Draw version. Currently, we are um, using Fluid Draw P6 
and by the beginning of next year we will upgrade to FluidDraw P7 with new features. So if you are a customer of the annual subscription then you will um, enjoy all the benefits and new functions of this FluidDraw license. Or if you're not a fan of subscriptions then you can also purchase the Perpetual license FluidDraw P6 this license is more expensive, um, obviously, because you just pay once and you get bug fixes and maybe some minor function updates, um, but you will not get the new functions which will be available with the P7 version or the P8 version in the future. So in the end, it's up to you which license you prefer. Um, annual subscription or the perpetual license, we offer both of those licenses in our Festo app world, which you have just seen before. Okay, having said that, I think I will now share my screen to introduce FluidRaw to you. Until uh, you uh, prepare your FluidRaw, I just want to to tell everyone that can use the the chat for questions and at the end we will have a short uh, q and a session to answer all of your uh, questions thank you very much now you should be able to see my screen and hopefully also myself um, i already started fluid draw this is the desktop application um, and this is how FluidDraw looks when you open it for the first time after installing uh, the application. Now, if you start with FluidDraw, you will be greeted with an empty, empty sheet here. So if you want to start with a project, if you want to start drawing and adding symbols, the first thing you need to do is to open um, a new project. You can do this here on the left side to open a new project um, you can give this project a name uh, i will call it webinar uh, webinar one probably um, and then you create the project and you will see that you here have your project and the first page which was already created automatically now this looks a bit blank and usually the first thing you do is selecting a drawing frame for your project. You can do this for the whole project or for each of the pages which belong to the project. I think it makes most sense to determine the drawing frame for the whole project. So this is what I'm doing. I can now select the drawing frame and in Fluid Draw there are already um, several default drawing frames in A3 or A4, for example. Um, I customized the drawing frame and I will use this one. Now, as you probably saw, when you go to edit, you, um, you can, you can uh, customize it a little bit more. Um, the drawing divides and then you are quite flexible here but probably the most interesting thing for you will be here the Festo logo um, probably it doesn't really suit your purpose to have always the Festo logo here on the drawing frame so I quickly show you how can how you can insert your own logo you just select the picture here you choose a picture now I prefer I prepare the logo which is probably known to you um, since I'm from Stuttgart I think the Mercedes-Benz logo would work quite well here. So you can input it like that. You press finish and then the drawing frame is created and here you also see the logo. And this drawing frame will now be inherited to all future pages you create here. Now, if you want to um, insert some information here, you can do this as well. You can either double click on a field or you can go to the page go to properties and then you um, can input some attributes here for example if i want to add my name here on the certain page you see where the field is and then i can add neumann 
um, save it. And then for this page, my name will be here and you can also add uh, the date and so on and so forth. So that usually would be the first step to do to include a drawing frame. And now you can work and start your uh, adding, adding your symbols here in Fluid Draw. There are many different ways to input symbols. I will introduce them one by one. You see standard symbols here, neutral standard symbols according to the ISO norm um, 1219-1. And I will start with a pneumatic symbol. You also see that Fluidra offers a, a, a range of electric symbols. However, today I will just focus on the pneumatic symbols. Um, maybe one hint for you. Next year with the version P7, we will also include hydraulic symbols. So fluid draw will then not only be for electric and pneumatic um, components, but also for hydraulic components. Now let's take one actuator and just drag and drop it into your drawing frame. And you see that here, um, the actuator appears here. There is an identification here as well. So if I would drag and drop another actuator over here, you would see that the identification is unique and for each new actuator, um, the numbers will increase here. If I double click on a symbol, I will get the detailed information, the properties of the symbol um, here where I can configure in that case, the cylinder, I can um, change the, the piston uh, position, for example, um, I can I can add a spring if I want. I can also um, give some further information about the piston. Maybe here we have a magnet included. Um, and here, as you see, when you look for catalog properties, there is no information here. Because what I just did is I took a neutral symbol for my drawing frame. This has currently no connection to our Festo products. This could be uh, a normal cylinder. And if you want, you can now um, add, for example, a part number here as an attribute. Um, what part number? One, two, three, four, five, obviously. And you can save those things. Um, and then those changes are applied here. So that is one thing which you can do, um, how you can add symbols here there are different symbols here manual control and so on and so forth one thing to add symbols is from the standard symbol catalog here on the left another option to include um, inputs here is when you want to look for a symbol maybe you're not finding it directly here but you can find symbols under insert and then find symbol and here you can now search for components. Maybe you want to include air supply. So here, compressed air supply, that would be the symbol for air supply. Or um, you're looking for flow control. And then you would here um, have the option to add some flow control um, symbols in your drawing frame. I select this one. Now I can place it uh, wherever I want. And here is my symbol for the flow control. You see also here a unique identification. By the way, um, if I um, mark the symbol, I can also copy it, I can duplicate it. So here is my second version. And as you see, um, the identification also um, increases where the more symbols I have of the same kind. Now we have again with a double click a neutral symbol. There is no connection. There is no catalog properties. Also here you have drawing properties which you can change. But now let's assume that you want to use for this flow control a Festo component and this can be done very easily when you um, look here for part number, you can go um, in the properties to find and by doing so the Festo catalog will open and here you can then input 
products are recommended based on the symbol, which you can then use for your drawing. So in our case, um, uh, you can choose any any product here, uh, probably here, uh, one one eighth of an inch, um, QS. I'll I'll take this one. Um, by doing so, you see that now my symbol has the attributes. It has a Festo part number. Um, I now don't have a neutral symbol here anymore. There's the type code out of it, but I now used the information from the Festo catalog. So when I double click on it, you see that in that case here, the catalog properties are completely filled. And um, this is now a Festo uh, flow control. Uh, I can do the same for the cylinder, for example. So here is another way to um, now get additional information for those components for Festo. You can not only um, find the symbols where you get neutral symbols, but you can also directly import components from the Festo catalog. If you edit here, uh, if you click on the symbol from Festo catalog, it will open right away. And here you have your search. For example, if I want to um, get a flow control again, then here you see exactly um, the information. I can also um, search for a type code and then again, um, those flow controls will be recommended to me and I can import them. Now, now I have those symbols. Obviously, I would like to connect them to each other. So what I can do here is uh, I can place them underneath. If I zoom in, I can connect those uh, lines directly with mouse. But what I can also do is I can take it and then move it underneath and then it will be automatically connected. And now I can move those parts or here I can move the cylinder and the connection is established and will remain like that. So here I can start um, with my first drawings um, and connect those devices in a very easy and I think intuitive fashion. Now let's have a look at the Festo catalog again and let's input um, some, some more standard components here. We can search, for example, for a DSBC. This is probably a cylinder known to you, 33. Um, so here you see uh, the different pictures as well. Um, now I can choose any any kind of component. I want this, for example. Um, I can also include the picture. So I can select whether I would just like to have the symbol for my drawing frame or whether I would also include the picture. I can add it to the selection. And then in that case, I could place it here. And here you see that um, again, the identification um, is, is counted and here you have the picture. Also the picture has the identification. Um, maybe it is good to have you some pictures, but you can also um, erase it afterwards. If you buy, erase it by mistake, you can obviously just go back one step and there it is again, or you can do uh, a right click on the component and you can insert related symbols. The secondary symbols are uh, displayed here. So I would like to add the picture again. And for the Festo components, we offer you the picture again. So here you can add this afterwards in the drawing frame. All right. Now, what we did is we connected here the cylinder to our flow controls. That was quickly done. Um, if we go to the properties, um, Again, you see, you can see the part numbers. We also see here from the order code that it's a one eighth of an inch um, connector. We just connected it to the cylinder. Not quite sure um, whether it actually works. So um, as you remember, this was a, a neutral component from our standard symbols here. 
I will erase this and I want, would like to take our um, DSPC cylinder, which I can add here. Now I want to find out whether the connectors actually work. So what I can do is uh, I can find out more detailed information about this Festo component. If I go to the online service, I can select the component and then I can have a look at the data sheet to, to get more information and see whether actually this cylinder fits um, to the flow control. If I open the data sheet, um, I get all the information from this component right away. And here we now can, can look whether the pneumatic connection has the right size. Perfect. It's also one eighth, so that works quite well. What I want to show you here is that when working with fluid draw and the FESO components, um, you can get all information from different sources, um, very transparent and easy to find here within fluid draw. Okay, we have now flow controls, we have a cylinder, probably would be a good idea now to add uh, um, a valve actually. For this, we can go to the Festo catalog because uh, let's assume we want to use a Festo valve in that case. I'm now I'm looking for, for any kind of valve here, in our case VG, uh, VUVG valve, probably known to you, one of our rather new ones. Um, I can select um, any kind of valve. Here you see that you have different options when inputting this into your um, drawing frame into your project. Here again you have a picture, but in that case we don't really need that. Um, this is the old way of displaying uh, this valve. This would be the new way. And therefore, I would just like to have this symbol here. I add it to my selection and then I can place it here. And here you have now the VUBG wolf again with the type code. Um, if you want to get rid of the type code, you can also just delete it. Now let's zoom in a little. If I want to connect, this valve to my um, flow, flow controls. I can either just put it right underneath so the connection is established automatically or again I can connect it manually. I can also do fancy things, uh, move up and down and up and down and do, do a ladder or something. So I'm quite free here when it comes to um, drawing those connectors. I can move those things and the connection stays established. I think that is also um, quite handy. Now, when having a closer look at this valve, maybe I would like to have something here for the exhaust, a silencer. I could add some silencers from the um, pneumatic symbols right here. I could look for silencers um, um, when in our neutral library here, or I could edit from the Festo catalog. But the most easiest way probably is to um, enter those exhausts here, do a right click, click on properties. And now I can select the connector. If I want to have a terminator, probably, probably here a silencer would be good. Um, I can display the identification. Then you will see those codes again. And you can choose whether you want to have those um, silencers in your parts list, which we'll cover a little later, or whether you don't want to have them in there. In our case, let's just say we would like to have them displayed in the parts list. If I press OK, then you see here um, that our silencers are included. The Q1, that is the identification of the valve. So the silencers directly attached to the valve now have the Q1 as an identifier and then the RP1 for the, each of the silencers. If I double click on a silencer, you will see that again, there are no catalog properties because this is a neutral symbol. What we can do now is if we highlight them both or one by one, we can um, again look for a part number 
in our Festo online shop and then choose a silencer. This one, for example, um, made out of plastic. Add this and now you see that the part number is there. And for this silencer now, we have it um, from our Festo catalog. So here we have now a very uh, short circuit, um, very simple. Um, in case you have the same thing several times, you can just copy the whole thing and then um, use it side by side. For example, if you don't, you can delete um, components by itself or um, the whole component. Now, we don't only have the option to have, uh, work with single valves, we can also import valve terminals. And in order to show you how this works, I will create a new page because those valve terminals are rather big. So I go to webinar here um, and I add a new page. And this page I will call valve terminal. So here we are, a new page. You see the logo is there, the name and the date. I can now fill in again. Um, now we want to start working with valve terminals. And I would like to show you another way to get symbols into FluidDraw. So not from the standard symbols, um, not from those options over here. You can also import them from the shopping basket from your Festo homepage, for example, or from an uh, offline shopping basket. What I would like to introduce here and what I already prepared is Quick Search. Um, Quick Search is a very neat application if you're looking for information or products in general, um, which are from Festo. Here I have already a CPX MPA valve terminal, which is configured. I configured it um, before. If you would like to do the configuration right on the spot, you could also do this by just searching for an MPA. And if you then click configure here, then our Festo configuration tool will open and you can configure the valve terminal and uh, decide what kind of component you would have. I already did that. Um, in order to save time, I will just use this configuration here. Now, um, quick search. This uh, searching tool has a direct link to FluidDraw. You see here that you can um, insert the component directly into FluidDraw. If you select this option, you see here our valve terminal. I want to include this here. And here we have the valve terminal. Now, this is a rather a big component here you see that is marked orange that means that parts of it are outside of our drawing frame if i scroll here on the left you see that this continues for quite a while now in order to see what you have uh, outside of your drawing frame maybe it makes sense to um, input the navigation pane which you can do when you go to view and navigation pane the benefit of this is that you see right away if you have components outside of your drawing frame. If we go to our first page, you see here our navigation pane, that's quite easy. What you can do, for example, is when you select a frame in the navigation pane, then it will jump right away to the areas you selected. In that case, um, that's not so useful because you have all the components in the drawing frame. However, for our valve terminal, you see at a glance that there is lots of components missing. And if I scroll to the right, then you see also my navigation pane scrolling to the right. Now, what you can do if you have inserted such a big valve terminal is you can split the separate valves on several pages. I can do this by clicking and uh, doing a right click. And then I can dis distribute the valve terminal on multiple pages. If I select this, then here I can decide how many pages I would like to distribute this valve terminal. 
eight separate pages are recommended by FluidDraw. This is the minimum number of pages you, you would need. You can here probably say, um, be a little bit flexible, but you can also say, I would like to have um, a, sep a single page for each of the valves. I take the automatically calculated a suggestion of eight pages. Um, and if I press OK, there will be some calculation done and you'll see several things. First of all, more pages have been automatically created in my project webinar. You see the valve terminal page here too has been now duplicated several times. And each of those uh, pages, if I go to the valve terminal three, now contains some part of our valve terminal. As you can see, I think it was here page five. Um, the information is split here. Um, ePlan, for example, or other um, other drawing uh, or other other software application sometimes have one well for each um, page. You can obviously do it like this. However, in Fluid Draw, we try to minimize the number of pages. Um, so here there are two valves displayed on a single page. You can move this around here. And what is quite interesting is that you have those jump marks here. And they tell you right away that here at page number two, at um, position B4, there this um, valve terminal continues. I can now make a right click and then jump to target. And then I will be at page two before and see that all right here um, is, is the other side of the valve terminal. And you can then start working here at your components and so on and so forth. So this is the rather handy way to work with valve terminals. Um, and you have them now displayed here on each of the pages. All right, now going back to our first page and zooming in a little, um, what FluidDraw also can, can offer is not only the components itself, but a parts list. You can create a parts list or parts that is automatically created um, in FluidDraw. And in order to show you how quickly this can be done, I would like to add a parts list here. You can do so by go to insert and then report. There are different reports. I would like to show you the options you have for parts list. You can have a single position parts list where every piece you have on your drawing frame is included or for an accumulated parts list where you see then the quantity of those pieces. Let's go for a single position parts list. In that case, um, I press OK. Now I can select where I would like to have the parts list displayed. And here I can now um, decide what kind of symbols, what kind of components I would like to, dis um, to have displayed in the parts list. The default option is I want to include all components from the whole project, but I can also make selections. Maybe I just want to have the components on the first page um, or only the components on this page. So here you can make a selection. I say I just want the webinar one. And then I can include the parts list here and then move it wherever I want. If I would have um, taken a bigger drawing frame, A3 probably uh, is what most people use, then I would have enough space. Now um, I can just move it up here. And this is the standard parts list. And the good thing about this parts list is that you don't have to worry um, about keeping up to date because whenever I delete a symbol, it directly gets deleted in the parts list as well. So here, uh, I don't have to worry about keeping it up to date. Um, if you have a lot of things on your drawing frame, then maybe it would make sense to add an additional page just for the parts list. Um, 
I would give a description. Parts list. So here it is, you see it here um, at the bottom, and now I can insert my report. Again, I want a single position parts list, and I can place it here. Now I want to have all the products in my project, and I can also do some additional column selection here. Uh, because I have a valve term terminal, I also want the order codes, for example. Um, but I'm not interested in, I don't know. No, I think I'll leave it like that. Or if I press OK, then I have my parts list here. If you're not happy with the size of the parts list, what you can do is you can always um, change, whoops, where is it, manage, no. There you go, edit. You can always scale the certain object. So if I enable the scale, now what I can do is I can make this bigger and adjust it to the frame size or make it smaller. And um, that's up to you. So this is, by the way, this option um, to scale also works for the symbols or the pictures if you're not happy with the um, with the size. And if you want to do some other adjustments here, you can edit the parts list and well, and then for example, you can uh, increase here the column size so that the ident codes um, are fully displayed. That is up to you. So here we would have now our parts list at the end of the project with all the components in there um, to give you a nice overview on page 10 out of 10. Going back to our normal um, thing where we started to work in the beginning, the first page, if you are um, happy with the, with the standard pneumatic symbols you have here or um, the way how you can search for symbols or get them from the Festo catalog, that is nice. Um, this is what FluidDraw can do best, but in many cases it could make sense to include or to create a personal library. Maybe of those components you use most of the time or for things you just want to um, have standardized, what you can do is FluidDraw offers the option to create a new library. So you don't have to search for things or find them in the standard symbols. You can create a library. Um, I'll call it test123. And then you have here next to um, to the standard symbols, you see some unplaced symbols, but you also have now here your library. And in this library, you can create now subfolders. One folder, for example, could be for valves. Um, one subfolder could be for circuits in general. And then what you can do is with drag and drop, you could just drag, nope, I don't want this included. You can drag your circuits here into your library and you can describe it, circuit one, and then you can use it in the future. Now I want to have it here at circuits, there you are. Or if you just want to have, um, Certain, certain valves in there, maybe here with the with the silencers included, you can also drag it in here. Uh, I'm not very creative, valve one, let's say, and then you can you can have those um, displaced here. Now I just uh, I have a double in here, so I just use this one. Here you go. and put it in my circuits here, one, two, three, four. And by doing so, when you want to input those, for example, for your valve terminal, then you can directly take it from here, drag and drop it, and then um, 
stop working. So those personal libraries might be handy um, to also um, yeah, increase your, your working speed and the symbols you use quite often you can place in here and drag and drop and then yeah just increase the um the speed and also yeah share those obviously with your colleagues if you're working together on some projects now obviously you can not only use floor draw for um, creating those nice drawings here but you can also save them as a pdf or uh, print them or share them among colleagues those options i think are clear and are um, basic for those um, standard circuit or uh, circuit drawing programs we have now 15 minutes left. This was just a very quick introduction of the most, most basic functions of fluid draw. Um, as mentioned, there is a whole list of things um, of electrical symbols, which we didn't cover today. Um, next year, there will be more um, hydraulic symbols as well. But I think I would like to use the remaining 10 to 15 minutes for some general questions concerning fluid draw. Um, before doing so, I would recommend you to just get the free trial license. Um, in order to do so, you can go to our Festo App World, which was introduced um, prior to this um, little product presentation. In the Festo App World, you can get the setup file for FluidDraw. So here um, is a link where you can download the application. And in order to use FluidDraw, you would need some kind of license. Here you can also get the try license. In the app world, it's a 30-day try license. Um, the only thing you need to do is you need to log in with your Festo, um, Festo online shop or Festo app world credentials, and then you can get the try license and then try Fluid Draw for yourself. What I also would like to highlight is that we have a lot of explanation videos freely available on YouTube. So if you're wondering um, about certain functionalities, you can have a look and I'm pretty sure that some of our videos will cover the questions you have. And we have a manual, a very detailed manual where fluid draw is also explained. So if you uh, don't want to, to uh, play trial and error while experiencing and working with fluid draw, you can also have a look in our manual. Now, I think at this point, um, the general ideas of fluid draw are clear to you. Um, I think you could see that working with it is quite um, quite simple, that we took care of a lot of nice features and good connections to other applications we have. Um, I would like now to um, yeah, ask questions if you have any, um, and then I yeah, thank you very much for your attention. Have there been any questions? Alexandro? Yes, we have some, uh, some question. Uh, what is needed to insert Festo products? offline xdki quick search or fluid draw will itself connect to the internet this is a question from tonis yeah fluid draw itself will be connected to the internet um if you have an internet connection um then you can as i as i showed here um use the online service for um, additional informations you can use um quick share uh, quick search to import some information, but if you want to insert information, you can also use the offline um, product catalog um, to import uh, Festo components or the online um, shopping basket. For this, you obviously would need some internet access. So we're quite flexible and wherever you have the Festo component, we made sure that you can import it into FluidDraw and then work right away. Okay, uh, another question is, it is possible to provide simulation in FluidDraw? FluidDraw is um, 
only for circuit diagrams and drawing it. The simulations um, the customer is probably talking about for this, we have a twin application which is called FluidSim. Um, FluidSim is for those simulations. In a fluid draw, we cannot do those simulations. Um, fluid sim looks quite similar, but is for simulations. Okay. Uh, Tony came with a clarification. Uh, he means to the Festo catalog icon. You need to have the uh, XDKI uh, behind, or uh, it will connect uh, straight to the Festo page. Uh, I so think you're you talking one... about the uh, about the secondary symbol, probably, and uh, that information is already included directly in fluid draw so it's not need to, needed to have uh, another catalog installed uh, together with it. Um, Martin you could just show it by uh, clicking add from Festo catalog again and uh, yeah you will see the the different options that we do have. The, we will see the all related symbols directly if we click on add from Festo catalog. Did that answer the question? I think not. Uh, I I think uh, what he wants to to mean is that if you need some additional program installed. Uh, in case of uh, Festo catalog. So if you have fluid draw and you don't have uh, quick search or XDKI, uh, you will have this uh, this feature. Yes. So, so you have to, if this you don't have anything else installed except the fluid draw on your computer, it will work. You will find the uh, uh, Festo catalog. Yes, that's true. That is working. so. This, uh, this icon it's it's linked uh, already with uh, fluid with the Festo Festo page. Yeah. So those uh, those um, Festo catalogs, if I'm not mistaken, um, are already those products are within Fluid Draw, and um, you can you can add them also if you don't have any quick search installed or shopping baskets or anything. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, another question is: uh, There are any plans to include more electric symbols? For example, some macros for, uh, from Siemens PLCs. Um, we have some the standard symbols here included. Um, probably most interesting here the uh, frequently loose symbols. Um, these are our standard symbols, as you can here uh, see depending on the norm, um, we will add more symbols one by one. I'm not sure whether um, uh, how much symbols we will include from, from different suppliers, um, but um, for this probably we will, we will get some more information once Marcos is back. I, I think he quickly lost his internet connection, but I can, we can get back to this question in a little while. Yeah, I'm back again. There you are. Marcus, the question was whether more electrical symbols, for example, from, from Siemens PLCs will be included in fluid draw. Uh, yeah, we plan to include some, uh, some neutral standard symbols for PLCs like uh, import, uh, like uh, yeah, IOs um, and, and PLCs like that, yeah.
And there were a couple of questions about uh, about simulation. I, I think you already discussed that, right? That we have uh, fluid sim uh, provided by Festo Didactic, and there are also different licenses available for fluid sim. Yes, this part was uh, already covered. Uh, we have uh, two more questions. Uh, how to add customer part number uh, to the symbols? And if there is any standard way to draw the magnetic sensor on uh, uh, pneumatic actuators? Well, the first question um, is quickly answered. We can just uh, input um, a symbol here, which is now neutral. And let's say you want to customize this. Um, you can go to user defined properties and then, for example, add an attribute part number and then you can you can um, type in your part number if you want you can also activate that this partner is then displayed and here for example you can then um, yeah customize those products um, and and work with them and also add part numbers which can also be displayed in the parts list if you um, add the field um, display customized attributes. For the second question, I would forward to Marcus when it comes to drawing um, those magnets, right? Yeah. Uh, let me just add one information regarding the individual or customer part numbers. If you do have them available in another system, they will be imported directly. For example, in Quick Search, you also have the possibility to maintain your individual uh, part numbers. And if you do so, um, uh, then they will be uh, imported from Quick Search to Fluid Draw as well. And also, if you have a Festo product catalog installed, uh, and you have maintained your personal part numbers there, Fluid Draw will access these uh, part numbers as well. So you have the possibility, as Martin showed, to maintain it directly in Fluid Draw. But if you already have it in some other system like Festo Product Catalog XDKI, or in the online shopping basket, or in Quick Search, Fluid Draw will access that information. So, for example, if you use the product catalog, you will also have the possibility to search for your customer part number if you have it maintained in the XDKI, which is not here at the moment, but uh, yeah, that certainly works. And then the question was about the uh, the actuators for the valves. I guess you're talking about these here, and uh, also there is a standard uh, for that, how to display it in the pneumatic catalog. And uh, if you want to also use these symbols or the references in the, on the electrical side, uh, fluid draw will create a symbol, an electrical symbol automatically uh, if you insert the electrical valve and you will find that here in the unplaced objects section and you will notice that this um, valve is called Q1 and M1 is the electric actuator here and you will find Q1 M1 directly up here. So if you click here that will also be highlighted and then you can just drag and drop it on any other page or also on the same page if you want and after that you will notice that it is no longer in the unplaced section because now it is placed and yeah this is exactly the same object referencing uh, your your valve and um, yeah, it depends if you want to use that uh, in this way or if you want to, you could also just double click it here and you can add any uh, anything you want, uh, 
any address maybe that you want to use and that is displayed here and yeah, then that's also enough and it's okay. Sorry, Marcus. The question was about the the sensors on the on the cylinders. If there is any standard ah. way to to implement them. Ah, okay. So also here there are different different ways. I think uh, one thing I already saw is just uh, just use a line uh, to to display that. And then you can also use that line and assign product information. So you can tell in the identification that that should be B1. And you also can add catalog properties to this line. So click on find and uh, try to find a Festo sensor like the SMT maybe smt 8m whatever you want to use click ok or double click the line and that will copy all information here and that will also be shown in the parts list and you can see your part numbers and everything you need so yeah this would be one option to to tackle that the other possibility is to use uh bigger symbols so if we go to the festo catalog and we search exactly for that smt um you will find that and yeah that was what i wanted to show you before i lost my connection you have um, all these related symbols here directly in fluid draw without having to install a fluid draw or without having uh no sorry of course you have to install fluid draw but you don't need to install a festo catalog locally and you don't need an internet connection and here you can choose the representation of your uh of your sensor now and one could be the picture that martin already showed um this one here is the pneumatic representation and if you want to use it in uh, the electrical circuits you would probably go for this option here so that one could be an option to use in the pneumatic part here and now you have b1 for the the left position and you have b2 for the right position and yeah that may be a little bit too much so you could position that here where it makes sense or you could also position that up here because you want to have this position and this position covered and then i think there is no right or wrong it's just a matter of personal style um, according to the standard both is okay and according according to the standard these um symbols are designated with the designation letter b so that is fine i think here yeah thank you guys good i'm just uh, checking the, the questions pane if there's anything it, um, only one question so coming from S5, Fluidro S5 to P6, and from pages to project. How the yeah. handling is different? Um, yeah, the, the good thing in Fluidro P6 now is uh, that we are only using one file for the whole project. So that that may be similar to to fluid draw s5 where we used one file for one page and in general in fluid draw p6 if you only like to work with uh, uh, one page you can because you saw it uh, in the beginning when martin started with the presentation he created the first project and the project directly holds the first page so uh, if you don't want to work with multiple pages, that's no problem. Um, the first page is already included in your project. Just use the first page and save your project and then the project consists of one page. 
that works fine. And also the import, if you want to import something from Fluidro S5, you can open it with P6 and then save it in the P6 file format if you want to. And you can add multiple pages from S5 to combine that to one P6 project if you want to. Okay, I think these were all the questions. Some of them were, are uh, already answered. I think only one uh, shows, uh, at least for me, uh, a bit of interest. Do we have the process automation symbols such as ball valve actuators and uh, this type of uh, of products for process uh, yes, automation? We, yeah, yeah, uh, we we do have uh, most of them already in Fluid Draw. So if we if we take a look at that, uh, what could be a good example? Here, something like this, maybe. Uh, yeah, so most of them are already here. They will look a little bit bigger. Uh, yes, exactly, but they are here. Um, and they also have uh, connectors here. That is already a hydraulic connector, which is prepared here. And as Martin already said, we will improve that uh, functionality and the symbols regarding hydraulic and also uh, process automation symbols. So we are, we are aware that uh, process automation is not only hydraulic, it cannot be compared directly. Okay, so uh, one more question. It seems that uh, is a lot of interest uh, to this uh, topic. Do we have any option to interchange the diagrams between fluid draw and fluid sim? Uh, yes, that's a good question that always uh, comes up here. And there is no direct interface um, at the moment. However, it may work for simple symbols. For example, a pneumatic drive and uh, also uh, a simple valve but it will definitely not work with the more complex symbols like valve terminals and so on so in general we say there is no interchange possibility however you could just try it and uh, do a, a copy and paste from fluid draw to fluid sim and the other way around so if you're lucky, then it works. But the problem is that the, the information behind the symbols, the, the simulation models in fluid sim, they, they really differ from the information behind the symbols in fluid draw. In fluid sim, it's more physical attributes. And in fluid the draw, it's just uh, commercial attributes like a part number and a uh, type code or something like this. Thank you. Yeah, but it, it, is, it is asked uh, a lot of times. So <laughs> that's also a thing that we are thinking about for the future. How is it possible to improve that? So. Okay, and the question that we didn't cover on, uh, on the beginning, for the users that already have a previous version of Fluidro, could they upgrade it or they have to buy this latest version and start from the beginning? Um, yes, uh, these applications are different applications, so you will definitely have a new setup uh, and a new installation of FluidDraw P6, and there are also new licenses, so you will definitely have to buy a new license, and um, in case somebody just uh, bought a fluid draw p5 license last year or then uh, you could uh, think about some special upgrade uh, paths but there is no predefined way to upgrade so in general it's two separate applications 
And uh, the good thing is that we now introduced that uh, annual subscription, Fluid Draw 365, which will take care of all that. So uh, with that annual subscription, you always can use the latest version. So I think that was the, the last question. Uh, I want to take, thank you both for uh, the presentation and for uh, answering the, the questions. I want to thank all the participants to, that they come around to see this, uh, this webinar. Hopefully they enjoy it and they find um, uh, the presentation very good and answer some of their question. If they have uh, any other questions, questions uh, at least for the Romania we have the technique uh, around festo.ro uh, address to ask technical questions or they can send us in any way their questions it seems that we have another question if we have also a fluid sim trial version but I think this is more a didactic question not an automation question but maybe uh, one of you could answer this question uh, yeah martin i think there is a trial license but i don't have a direct link at the moment uh, it should be available on the festo didactic website if you search for fluid sim there uh, there should also be a trial license for that okay this is everything from my side Thank you again, and don't forget to register to the next uh, sessions of webinar. The following uh, Romanian webinar, it will be about uh, Cabinet Guide Online. So please join the, the webinar. From, for this time, it will be in, uh, in Romanian, not in uh, English. So <laughs> thanks again, uh, guys. Thank you. Thanks to you. Okay, have a nice day.